buyer or client for you or who they know who would be a good prospective investor for you or who they know who would be a good introducer for you to other people that would be good buyers. And I can just take this concept, it's like a font, it's like a fountain that has cascading flows and it's just infinite in what you can do with it when you understand it. And again, I can go deep and and long. I could speak for two, three, four, five hours just on relationship, but we're talking about levers. Strategy, marketing, relationship, the next is capital. And capital means many things. How you spend your money first. And why is that important? Because if you only have a finite amount of money or you have no money, how you spend it makes a big difference. You spend it wrong or you pay it out too fast or you pay too much or you pay to the wrong people and don't get the outcome, two things happen. One, your business might fail before it starts or the business you buy might fail. Second, even if it works, you might be accepting a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the result that you could be generating. So you have to look at where your capital is being spent, how it is being spent, and then how it could be better spent. And now I've got to get you a little bit of a headache, but it's exciting. Capital does not just mean money. It doesn't mean just the cash. Capital means human capital, talent, people. You can either hire, partner with, uh, make arrangements with to um, endorse you, make arrangements with to advise you, make arrangements with to be your mastermind alliance. If, for example, you have limited funds and you need advertising, if you go to an advertising media and they say, well, it's $10,000 and they want you to write a check and you only have $10,000 and you write a check and it doesn't work well, you're in trouble. But if you go to them and say, let me pay half now and half in 90 days, you've just preserved $5,000. If you go to them and say, I'll pay you $20,000, but I'll pay it at the rate of 30% of every sale that I get until I've paid that to you. Or if you go to them and say, I can't pay that, but if you'll run ads for my product or service when you have available unsold advertising, I'll give you 50 or 60% of the sale. That changes the dynamic. If there is a media, can be pay-per-click, can be banners, can be magazines, radio, that you know works, but at the rate they charge, it won't work for you. It'll be too expensive for the result. You've got a lot of options with your capital. You can, number one, negotiate lower rates. Number two, do what's called a guaranteed sale. If some, if a radio station, for example, said, we want $100 a commercial, and you had $10,000, and that would only buy you 100 commercials, you might say, I'll tell you what, I need to get $30,000 worth of sales, and I will pay the 10,000, but you need to guarantee me that if the 10,000 doesn't produce the $30,000 of sales, you'll keep running ads for me until it does. And you can negotiate. When you hire people, you can move part of their compensation to performance. So you're not paying as much initially and you might pay twice as much ultimately, but you won't care because they're being paid in direct result to the profit they make you. We talked about intellectual property. You might have a skill set. Let's give you some examples. You might be better at selling a certain industry, a certain kind of product or service, and you can take that skill set and offer it to a lot of other people that want to use it and have them pay you a fee plus 
a percentage whether you sell it yourself or whether you teach their people to do it. You might have a technology that you've created that can be repurposed to lots of other industries. You might be able to go to companies outside of the market you want to target for whatever business you either want to start or buy. And you might be able to arrange to use that other company's proven selling system or advertising or operational system or inventory control system. It just gets very exciting because you do not have to do anything on your own and you do not have to spend money you don't have. You don't have to spend money unwisely. You don't have to spend money at all if you understand these options. And when I say capital, capital is money. Capital is opportunity cost. What does that mean? It means when you finally complete the modules in this program, you will realize that you have a number of options, opportunities, possibilities. For example, you can look within and say, here's my skill. I'm going to start part-time a service where I make my skill available to other either consumers or companies. And then you could say, I'm going to do that and either grow that or I'm going to do that until I grow $100,000 so I can buy another business. Or you can buy a business that is struggling, but you analyze, they have terrible marketing, they don't use their relationships, they don't try to get their buyers to buy easier, buy more things, buy more often, and you can acquire that kind of business, not for writing a check right now, but for paying the owner a larger amount than the business is worth right now, but paying him or her out of the revenue you generate once you take over. You can buy into a business by adding more revenue streams or profit centers. As I said, if a company doesn't have a sales force and you can sell, you can go and say, I'll build a sales revenue stream and I want half ownership in all the profit that comes from it. You can go to a company that has an extraordinary brand but does not use the brand in as many ways as they could or should. And you could say, I want to create new applications or new ways to use your brand. License people, create products or services that take advantage of the brand, create products or services we can sell to your distribution network. I can go on and on, but the important point is you will have so many options that the most important decision you will make is opportunity cost. What that means is here's where you are right now. When you realize what's possible, you can be, and this is as, as high as my short arms will reach, but I'm trying to reach to the ceiling. You can reach for the stars long term, but trying to catapult is hard. Taking easy safe, high success probability steps are extraordinary. And once you understand these leverage points, these drivers, then you understand your options. Then I take you deeper into each category, which we'll be doing in future modules. Then you understand marketing really deeply. Then you understand strategic alliances really deeply. Then you understand how much power you really already possess. Then you understand how to take advantage of all these factors and forces. The most important decision you will be making is what is the best use of my opportunity cost right now? And opportunity cost for your purposes means a number of things. If you want to start part-time, it means what's the best area I can pursue part-time 
either using my skill or using my capital or using relationships that has the highest success probability for the time I can invest because you may not want to quit your job right now or you may be in school. Second opportunity cost is if I'm going to start a business from scratch, what business could I start that has the biggest gaps, the biggest voids in the market and where I can take the greatest advantage? Number three, if I'm going to buy an existing business, what business can I bring the greatest advantage to with the least amount of capital? Number three, if I'm going to try to do a deal with somebody who already has a brand and I want to add something to it, where's the highest probability of me being successful? And then number three, opportunity cost, where am I ultimately trying to get to? Because if you don't know where you're trying to go, you can't get there. And again, today I'm just trying to show you what's possible. But you can go a lot of places. You might say, I want to start with my skill part-time just to make money to buy a business. And I'm going to buy a business in a market that's very weak there. I can bring marketing advantage, strategic advantage, relationship advantage. And then I'm going to buy more of them with the profits so I can build a little mini empire. You might say, I'm going to buy a business. I'm going to quickly multiply its profit and performance and then I'm going to sell it for a big profit. You might say, I'm going to buy a business and turn it into a constant revenue generator so I can use that revenue to buy other businesses. You have lots of options, lots of possibilities. I'm not going to even get into them today. It's not what we're doing. We're just trying to show you that there are these drivers, strategy, marketing, relationships, uh, capital, and then processes and, and, and uh, procedures, but I've already covered that. And there are many, many more, but I want to move because I, uh, I can spend all this time. I want to go back to the three-way to grow business model. Remember, you, you figure out ways to attract more prospects and I didn't say this, cost effectively, and convert or transform them from prospects to first-time buyers. You figure out how to make when they buy them spend more money ethically so it's more profitable. You figure out how to get them to come back more often, more times, buying more things. And if you don't have more things for them to buy, you find more things that you can offer in many different ways. You can partner, you can license, you can joint venture, you can white label. But then you do the power Parthenon, all these pillars. There's actually another addition to the three ways to grow a business. I'm just trying to show you what's possible. Because you will find at the end of this, we're going to give you a customizable action planning guide that will let you take everything I will teach you. And then Play with it in different combinations to see which one makes the greatest sense for who you are and where you're at in your life and what you want and where you want your life to take you in business as a business owner or an entrepreneur or an independent income earner or whether you want to do it for another company. And you'll have all these options that you can put on a template and then put on a planning guide almost like a kaleidoscope, and you can see the different variations. But let me tell you the other three ways to grow a business, and these are advanced three ways, and they're very exciting. First thing is you want to do the first three ways that I told you about earlier. Second, you want to do the Power Parthenon, and it's all explained in your workbook. But once you get those things well established, now you've got three advanced ways to grow your business. Advanced way number one is every year you penetrate one new market. You take your product or your service or your 
knowledge or your skill or your intellectual property to one new market. And a market could be a different industry, market can be a different city, market can be a different country, market could be a different application. The second thing you do is you introduce one new product or service at least every year to your existing client. And you have two ways to do this, which is very interesting. You can introduce one new low-priced product or service or no price, meaning something that's no charge. It's functionally free. Why would you do that? Because lower-priced or no-priced products make it very easy for a marketplace to start a relationship with you. The sooner they start a relationship with you, the sooner they buy the first time. The sooner they buy the first time, the sooner they buy the second time, and the third and the fourth. Why you might want, on the other end, a very expensive product or service is that you will find, once you decide what you're going to do and where you're going to do it and how you're going to do it and with whom you're going to do it, that you have enormous options. But within any buyer base, there are segments. There are people who want more. They want more advanced things. They want uh, uh, more specific things. They want more individualized things. A good example is that I have partners all over the world. Many of them sell an introductory product of mine. Some of them give away uh, a really cool short course. We call it a primer, a basic overview lesson. Then they take that person who got it for nothing and they sell them a $500 product. Then they take the $500 buyers and they sell some of them or many of them uh, a, a $4,000 home study program. Then they take the people that bought the home study program and they sell some of them a $10,000 live program. Then at the live program, a small number of those people come to me and they want me to counsel them privately for two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. And another group want to buy specific training on specific topics like building a sales organization or mastering online um, marketing or um, building a referral system. And I'm not trying to give you a headache. I'm trying to vastly excite you and motivate you and encourage you and assure you that if you want success as a business owner, an entrepreneur, it is within your power. I can't guarantee anything except to tell you that everything I'm sharing, everything I will share, is based on successful and, and um, impressive um, achievement by people either I have helped or my colleagues have helped. So what you do with it is up to you, but you are being, you are being given not at all theoretical and not unproven, but very, very, very powerful education, understanding, instruction, and mentorship that I can promise 99% of all the business owners in, in your country don't have. I can promise that people starting a business won't even understand. And I'm just getting started in deeper modules will take you even deeper. The third advanced way to grow a business is every year to acquire either or or both a similar business in the same field that you can buy not for writing a big check, but for paying the owner out of the profits. And why would they accept that? Because when you combine two businesses, you can eliminate a lot of the overhead of the one you buy. If you've got a billing department, if you've got a shipping department, if you've got a manufacturing department, if you've got a customer service department, if you've got a showroom, you don't need two. So if 
if all of those areas are expenses right now for a company that's a good company, but a company that's struggling, if you bought that company and combined their buyers that you don't have with your buyers and you eliminated 90% of the overhead that they have, you'd make a very unprofitable or low profit business very profitable. And you can do that over and over again. It's just one of many things you can do. Another thing you can buy, and I'm trying to not give you a headache, but get you excited. You can buy a business that is what's called a feeder or is fed by the business you are in. And this gets into relational capital, which is a very big subject that I want to take deep and broad in an entire module. I don't want to go deep today. But if you think about whatever business you want to start or whatever business you want to buy, you've got to think of what else do people buy before they buy that product or service? What do they buy at the same time they buy that product or service? What do they buy after they buy that product or service? And what do they buy instead? Dead of that product or service. It gives you a lot of possibilities. Once you identify those possibilities, you now have a number of other businesses you can acquire or start that either would feed your business because they will bring people to you who are ready to buy your product or service or your product or service is the first thing they do when they're buying something else so you can feed that business and it all becomes synergistic. It all becomes uh, connected and everything feeds one another. And I'm giving you very cool thinking and it may seem like too much, but please don't get overwhelmed. I will break, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the vastness first, then we'll break it down into little parts then we'll evaluate at the end everything we've learned. Then we'll figure out how to take what we've learned and, and do like a Rubik's Cube or a kaleidoscope and give you the understanding so you can figure out exactly and precisely and, uh, and joyously what to do first and where you want whatever you do first to take you to long term. So please, please, please just enjoy this process because I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm trying to excite you. Now I'm going to teach you another group of drivers. These are skill sets you need to either possess or master or acquire through partnership or association with others to be a great entrepreneur. 